Good evening at 7.30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information, I believe, are the Makarowskis. Okay. Did you say 7.30? I mean, 6.30. Okay. <laughs> You're on. What have you got? Okay. Well, we, we would like to put a uh, freestanding outbuilding uh, behind our, our uh, location at 226 Russell Street. Uh, to house a vacuum system. Uh, the size of the, uh, of the structure would be approximately 97 square feet or 1.19% of the square footage of the existing building. Um, I know that the original building has uh, 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 vertical metal siding, which was not allowed in Hadley, but the previous owner uh, did that and we're trying to keep it the same look. Uh, it does a butt up against the uh, uh, back of the building, three feet away. Uh, it's going to house a vacuum system. Uh, we're not mandated by the state, but the OSHA requirements are that any workstation uh, has to be 20 feet from a vacuum. And in a small space like we have, uh, it's hard for a man to be 20 feet from a vacuum system. Uh, therefore, we want to build this structure freestanding, sitting on the blacktop. Uh, I sent in all the um, the site, uh, a little bit of a site plan for you folks to look at. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be on the gable end, north side, about uh, 75 to 100 feet from the bike path. Uh, um, that's kind of the whole thing in a nutshell. Uh, we need to get the vacuum system out of the workspace for noise and dust and and just improve uh, working for us and uh, comply with uh, OSHA and our insurance as well. <clears throat> Questions? The name of the business again was what? Uh, creative Space. Uh, yeah. It's Creative Space Shower Doors and More at 226 R Russell Street. <clears throat> R for rear building. Yeah, that's the old, uh, the old Z location. Right. Another great business success story in Hadley. My <clears throat> so I, I circulated the uh, the plans. It looks innocuous, uh, quite a ways away from the nearest residences, and it will only be operating during normal business hours, as I understand. And that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions, comments from the board? I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I will get a uh, letter out to the building and just a little simple waiver form for the building inspector. Okay. Saying that we waive site plan approval. Probably get out within the next few days. Okay. And uh, but I'll let them know that we've we've approved it, so you should be all set. Okay, I'll get an application ready and have submitted first part of next week, uh, okay. something like that. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate your uh, your uh, time. Thank you. Next up, I believe Jane was next. Jane. Okay. I have two things tonight. First is um, for a joint sign for the library and the senior center. When we did our combined site plan long ago and far away, we thought we were gonna, we didn't know what we were gonna do for the sign. We thought we might keep the existing sign uh, that had been out in front of the building and further inspection showed that, that was really rotten for one thing. Um, and so we have designed a new sign. I sent them to Bill and I believe you all have copies of them and the proposed locations. It's not absolutely, you know, I can't say it's 12 feet from here and eight feet from there because uh, the library committee and I have to go out and see where it looks best. It will not be centered 
on the distance between the driveways, but it will be closer to the south driveway because that's where people will be going in. I don't remember looking at the sign, Bill. I remember seeing the I remember seeing the thing on the carport. Uh, it was further. Yeah, was sign. yeah, it was further down. Just scroll oh. down. Looks like a lot of other signs in town. School department, church. And it is uh, six foot by three and a half, two-sided. So that's what, um, 1821, okay. which doubles to 42, 42 square feet. Oh. Setback question, how far? I'm sorry? Uh, setback. Somewhere uh, number of feet. Uh, the uh, bylaw calls for a certain setback from the uh, town property. Not on so the town property because they're town buildings? No, it doesn't. It, it's uh, <laughs> Can you see it, Mark? <laughs> it's showing on the plan like it's about midway between the street and the sidewalk, but there's just a big bubble, so the graphic's hard to read. So that we can put it wherever you want it. Right, right. There may be a, may be a problem there because uh, the uh, sidewalk is is town property, and we say 15 feet back from the uh, from the front. Uh, that would probably put it back more toward the flagpole. So it's probably on town property, and uh, does it make a difference here, or it's certainly not the fifteen feet back from the. Uh, is that line? I don't is that know. where the you know? I. I didn't look at the the numbers, and I'm I'm sorry. I'm taking the, so, it through the bylaw now. Well, where it's showing, it might be a problem as far as line of sight goes. Yeah. Well, we're we're concerned about that, and we would certainly pay attention to that. It's the same that's shown right now at the distance that the old senior center sign was there. Could you put it on the east side of the sidewalk? They had yeah, it on, no, uh, it on, on the, the west. Go ahead, Jane. No, it's on the west side, which is where the other sign had been. So, so that, yeah, the, it's outside the property line. I remember there was a concern with the uh, the people to the north. The uh, the guy who was doing the framing business. He had to go to the ZBA just because of the configuration of the street and the setback and the sign. But uh, I mean, the sign itself is fine. It, yeah. it, the location is questionable. Okay. Jane, is that being prepared by EDM? EDM is our architect. It's being uh, produced by WS Signs in West Springfield. Yeah. Okay. Because they should know our ordinances and what the setbacks are. I believe they were following the existing signs location. Oh. Assuming because it was town property and their town buildings that that was not an issue. But that's an assumption which we probably should not have made. Right. I mean, town property versus library property, senior center property are different. But is there any, is there any devil's advocate? Is there an avenue to rebuild the existing, you know, say they say it's a grandfathered sign, we just want to rebuild it because it's rotted. The sign Could is pretty go forward right. under that route. I think that's a legitimate argument. That's probably the one we should support here because it's not going to be a huge neon sign and, uh, 
it's going to be tastefully decorated. The, the, the only concern I have where it is is line of sight coming off of the exits or into or out of the uh, two driveways. That's a good point. Um, can you move it? It is it pretty low. Closer to the sidewalk. I mean, you want to see a line of sight so that the cars, because you can't really tell from this picture how a line of sight would be looking north um, from the southern driveway of the uh, library, in front of the library there. So the plan is with this building, you may remember that it'll be one way in between the two, ex two libraries and out on the north side of the new library. Oh, so the driver is going to be reversed. The southern driveway will be in. Yes. One and way. It's a one way driveway. The driveway, driveway yeah. Yeah. is the exit. Correct. Yeah. The reason about, for that. Now, what about access to the old Goodwin Memorial? That means, well, that's the, oh, so the southern driveway is in. Right. Okay. All right. Never mind. The reason for that configuration is it puts our seniors entering onto Route 47 further from the traffic light and cars spinning around the corner. So I don't see that there would be um, much of a line of sight issue with the sign being at the entrance or near the entrance. Now the existing Goodwin sign is west of the sidewalk, between the sidewalk and the building. Correct. This suggests that you're talking about putting this between the sidewalk and the road. Correct. Because that's where our other sign had been. Well, but not the current, the current sign at the library is between the sidewalk and the structure. Correct. Uh, no, I'm not sure that's true. I believe it's outside the sidewalk, on the east side of the si uh, west side of the sidewalk. Yeah. Well, let's see. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can pull up Google Maps. I tried to uh, blow up the uh, picture you included, and it is inconclusive. I don't think I have street view option on my phone because that would show us a live or re recent photo. I could take a ride over and get back in five minutes. <laughs> John just went out and looked. Okay. John, did you notice if it's closer to the sidewalk or the street? Okay. okay. Which, um, that's, uh, where was the plan? Uh, looks like that's maybe 40 feet or so. So you'd still have a car length between the sign and the street to get your... Okay, how about if we simply say this, the, the new sign should be centered between the street and the sidewalk. Right, no further than midway, it should be... Midway. midway. Yeah, midway or closer to, to the sidewalk so that you can have a car length view both ways. I would support it, that. It also will be 
closer to the southern driveway than the northern because that's where people will be turning in. Okay. That, that right. Works. That's true. So it's not going to block yeah. views as much as you're exiting. Okay. Yeah. I confirmed it in street view. It is, it is there. That has not been a problem. Um, so the distinction we were talking about town property, it's not just that it's town property. It's that it's in the, um, the right of way for the street, which is, you know, we don't want, everybody just putting signs out in the right of way. Um, but since it is a town building, uh, since it's one sign for two buildings and it's replacing an existing sign in a comparable location. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I guess I don't have a huge problem with it. Uh, Yeah, I think it's uh, it's no worse and arguably better than the existing. What's the address of the school and the I mean of the senior center and the library, Jane? The senior center is forty six, and the library is fifty. Forty six fifty. Okay. The library used to have an address on Russell Street. So okay. they had to go through all kinds of things to change it to Middle Street. So it's midway between the sidewalk and the street, okay? <clears throat> what if we wanted it slightly closer to the sidewalk? That's fine. Okay, right. it won't be closer than midway to the street. Yeah, okay. Why don't we why don't we we'll, say we'll the say, western the western we'll limit of the sign will be no closer than midway. No closer than no, I want to I want to be a little bit more specific. It'll be midway between the sidewalk and the street or possibly closer to the sidewalk. Just so that we're perfect. Clear. Okay. Good. Any other comments? Size okay, the sign itself looks fine. Is um is that just going to be black and white, Jane? Yes, it is. Okay. And is there going to be any illumination? Uh, at the moment, no, because the library didn't put any underground wiring in. The possibility is if we find that we need it, we might simply go to solar lights. I was just going to suggest that. That'd be cool. Especially right, since solar, solar would be fine for as much as you're going to need it after, after dark, solar should last long enough. Especially since that big maple came down two weeks ago. <laughs> well, there's a few big ones that came down around. <laughs> and they're coming down some more because they didn't realize how rotted they were. Anyways. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for the sign to be located midway between the sidewalk and the street or closer to the sidewalk uh, adjacent to Southerly Drive. I would second that. Motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now the carport. Yes, uh, so I'm here because of the conditions on the senior center approval number five, which says no storage trailers, shipping containers, temporary or permanent storage structures, or any other storage facility not depicted on the approved site plans are allowed under any circumstances. Well, this is a carport sheltering the town $72,000 investment in the van. And you can see from the photographs that currently the uh, senior center car and the van are parked parallel, but we had DPW come over and we looked at it and turning the van 90 degrees, same parking space basically, and we would cover it. What color will the carport be? I believe it's going to be uh, sandstone beige, pebble sandstone beige. Sandstone beige. Pebble, pebble beige. I'm sorry. What is it again now? There's a there's a color chart in there, right? Right. Yeah. 
There is. Yeah, let me look at it so I'm not yeah, saying the wrong words. Pebble Pebble Beige is the uh, next to last on the in left. The, yes. In the left oh, column, right. right. And that's the color, that's the closest color to the building's color. The photo of the carport is actually 35 feet long, but it was as close as they could get me for a sample. And this is going to be a, quote, temporary structure. Uh, well, we don't plan to take it down, but it's not no, a storage permanent. structure. It's a cover. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's going to be there for a long time. That is the hope. Do we know the height of it? Uh, the Yes. 10 feet on the side and the roof is um, one over 12 or three over 12 and it's 10 feet wide. No, 12 so feet it's wide. not going to take up any additional parking spaces, huh? No, it's it's just covering the equivalent of one parking space. So what are you going to do, back in or? Yes. Okay. And then we had the sides and the gable ends to keep the real reason is snow, um, to keep the snow from blowing in. So it'll be covered on three sides? Four. Oh, it's gonna have a door uh, on it, it? It won't go all the way to the ground. The edge of the um, sides will be seven feet from the ground and the front will be, front and back will be 10. Oh, okay, oh, so I mean, so, so, so the three of the sides will not go to the ground. It's basically, struck, basically a roof. It's a roof. Okay. Well, I thought the sides might go down a little bit. No, no, not at all. Okay. So how cl how close to the building will it be? Which building? The senior center. Um. It's across the parking lot. Yes. You know where you park when you come to have your feet done? Yeah. It will back into that edge of the lot, but further towards the building. It's backed up against the retaining wall with a fence on top of the retaining wall. Um, Mike, I don't know if you have the email, Mike, with the photo. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I'm looking at it now. The photo of the one that they example that they sent that encloses a boat is rather hideous, but I don't I think ours tell you will, that pebble beige doesn't do much for me. Ours <laughs> won't be that tall. Uh, I almost think that something, this is, you know, I'm not, I'm not the greatest designer, but I almost think something that would have some contrast would, would look nice like the evergreen or what we call Amherst green. And I'm just throwing that out. You know, no bites. Well, I think the idea is to be in, in ocuous, for that lack of a better term, to the building. They don't want it to stand out. Right. They want it to be as invisible as invisible as possible, maybe a better way to say it. More homogenous with the well, existing building. They don't want to but take they, away but, but it's going to be so far away from the building that it's going to stand out because it's basically white. As opposed to something dark, it's going to be against the evergreen trees or what else, whatever else is planted there. You know, I don't think there's going to be a lot of vertical wall panels. It doesn't sound like that's the height allows if if the lowest comes down to seven feet, that means there's only three feet of it. So it's mostly roof. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? What's no, I just, I just, you know, hesitate to bring up the whole parking issue because once the planning board and other boards move into the Goodwin Memorial Library, we're going to have to quote, have the shared concept of parking because there's no parking for our meetings and for our cars at the Goodwin Memorial Library. Well, it, there's going to have to be some coordination between the senior center, the library, the town of Hadley, so that we can, quote, use the shared parking. And uh, this is more of an editorial comment on the side. And, uh, you know, I don't think we should be gun shy as a board not to support this because of course of a past condition where somebody was just going to put a little awning and we're going to have people seated outside and then there were some sides put on and then there was heat put in and all of a sudden we have a 
extension of a restaurant with not enough parking. So I'm not even going to go there with a the parking issue, but I do support the concept. It seems temporary enough so that if it but, appears just, just, just removal just, or something just, like that, I... Uh, just just carrying, carrying along your thought about the good one in parking, you may recall when we went through site plan approval here, we tried to bring it up and we, we had dramatic pushback that it was not part of this deal. Now it's part of the deal. What is this, a year later? We always knew it was going to be part of the deal. Sure. Well, now you... so. Having been in the buildings, I believe there'll be ample parking for all of us. I hope you're right. And this isn't taking any parking spaces that are not already taken by that van. It's not like we're covering a shelter area for abstraction. No, no, exactly. I was trying to lead Jane a little bit by Come on, the word temporary. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it is a temporary structure. If all of a sudden it interferes some way, shape or form, something could be done. Uh, you wouldn't have to demolish a whole building. It doesn't seem like a big deal. So, you know, I, I do support the, the concept of quoting more temporary than permanent structure. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for a carport in Pebble Beige. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, motion passes unanimously. I will get those uh, waivers out to the building inspector in the next two days, Jane. Thank you very I mean, much. I mean, in the meantime, I'll let him give him an email. Is everything been approved? So in case he'll know it's coming anyway. All right. Thank you. You can move forward. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye, Jane. Good night. Next up is Chuck. I don't know. It's all on your screen. It's Chuck. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not really sure how to use this. So <laughs> I've never done Zoom before. So am I? Are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. So basically, we applied for a sign permit for Excel uh, Physical uh, Nursing uh, on Russell Street. You, sh you all should have a plan, I'm hoping. For, for, for what? And it, it was for th actually two signs on, uh, one sign on the front wall, uh, one sign on the side wall next to the entrance door, and one on an existing pylon that's in the front. What, what's the address? Um, it's... I apologize. I rushed out of the office and I don't have the plans, but I, it's, I can check my phone if you give me a minute because I have all the information on my phone. Who is this for? It's for Excel Nursing. Yeah, I, I sent it around before the last meeting and then... Uh... Yeah, the problem what happened was we were going to go on the meeting and there was that thunderstorm and we lost power. So I apologize for that. And then somebody had emailed me and told me that we could join this meeting. Uh, so I had the link for the meeting for tonight. Can you can you physically describe the location, uh, the building adjacent to it, uh, rather than? I can go if you give me like two minutes. I'll get my phone because I have all the information in my so, program. Two forty five Russell Street. Two forty five. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. It was just a crazy the day. Hadley today. Park Plaza retail shops. Correct, and it's going uh, on the on the space that's. If you're looking at the building, it's on the far left of the building. From the, if you're looking at it from the street, it's the it's in the front building, not in the back. The, the front building, okay. correct. It's, it's the old Martua Insurance Office. Uh, two foot by nine foot. Belt two foot mountain, by nine. Correct. Two foot. Sign. The, the date of the email is seven thirty one. Yeah, I found it. So there's two signs. There's one over the awning, and there's a square one by the door. Correct. And then there's one small little, uh, it's just an existing sign. It's just a re-letter on the front panel on the front side. Oh, right. right. How big is the freestanding sign, Mark? I don't have. Uh, the rectangular on the gable is two foot by nine. So that's 18 square feet. He's got another three by three at the entry door, so that's nine. So you're at uh, 18, what are you, 20, 27 square feet? And then it's just a small. It's six by 46 on the front. The panel is a half a foot by, let's call 46 it four, inches. four feet. So that's like yeah. a, that's, that's like two square feet. So he's well under the. 
The street sign is just a little uh, tag on the existing Hadley Park Plaza. Hadley Park exactly. Park listing, Joe. Yep. Right. Okay. And it's only a half a foot high by about almost four feet wide, so it's two square feet. So they've got gas lights. So his, his, his building signs have two of them total 27 square feet. Yeah, so I, I get about 29 square feet total of all the, the building signs and the other panel. So the setback is adequate, the size is adequate, internal illumination is in or out? There is no illumination. Okay, so sounds like it conforms. The, the one at the top of the building, at the peak of the building over the awning, Joe, has a light right above it. Okay. That's an existing light, yeah. Not above the roof, not above the roof line. No, it's That's just, existing. It's, 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 it's within a neck. Okay. I'm fine. Or the gable end, if it may be a better way to say it, gable end. Okay. Yeah. That's two four Bill, did you say two forty five Russell? Two forty five Russell. Yeah. So given how little science there is, I don't think it's a huge deal. The uh bylaw does ask for uh signs to be uh wood or wood appearance. And I guess this is not you know, it obviously it's a metal sign, but it it could be a piece of wood that's painted there. Right. So, we're, we're putting a molding around the outside to make it look a little more, uh, you know, not just a flat metal sign. So there is going to be a molding on it. To look a slightly, you know, dimensional, like you're saying, yes. All right. So I'll make a motion to approve the design. I would second it. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, thank, you. thank you all very much. Just a minute, yeah. wait a minute. I just want to make sure. Well, I'm not leaving. I'm just thanking you. <laughs> okay. Sure. Okay. So we got, we've got your email. We're all set. All right. Okay. And I can I can forward uh, or Jim, you can just forward that uh, email to. Uh, I will. Yeah. To, Tim, uh, to Tommy. To the building inspector. Correct. Yeah. Would you mind CCing me when you do that, just so I'm in the loop? If I if you could. No, I, I, we can do that. Okay. I thank you. Very, I thank you for that as well. All right. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you all. Have a good evening. You, you too. Good luck. Yep, thanks. thanks. All right, now back to business at hand. What do we got, Bill? I've got one more. Um, <clears throat> Valley Construction Company uh, is looking for the release of another lot. We they um, had sent in an email, and we previously released lots two and four on uh, June 2nd. And they'd like to add one more lot to the release, lot three. There's seven lots in total in the subdivision, so there are four that are uh, still under covenant. Okay. They've got before we release the last one or two, they need to uh, let us know how they're going to address because they said they were going to put a one of their apartments into the subsidized industry subsidized housing thing. Correct. The, the subdivision approval says that the next to last lot is, will be released upon resolution of that issue and the last lot under our usual standards. Okay, yes. But by the time he gets to release that, hopefully we'll have the option of the uh, housing trust fund mailed away and he may decide to change his mind, which is fine. Yeah. But it'll be his choice. What's the, what is the magic number that you have to contribute to the trust fund? Seven units? Six. Anything over six? six. So, and he, he has seven. I, yeah. My recollection is he originally had nine or ten, but uh, natural heritage. Wow. Wasn't it almost? He lost four through uh, the spotted turtle. That's too bad. But. That is the way things go. 
Where is this um, located? Off what street? Shattuck Road. Shattuck oh. Road. North Hadley. Just just before the old slaughterhouse, a bit. Shattuck Road. God's country. Just south of the South Slaughterhouse. Okay. Marcus wasn't around when they were slaughtering. <laughs> I've been in the abattoir at uh, at UMass. It, it's interesting, you know. Drain the blood over here. You know, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. Well, there was, well, there was two slaughterhouses in Hadley: the one in off of Shattuck Road, and the one off Rocky Hill Road, right near the Amherstown Line. Hmm. Right where the uh, was it Five Star Bus Terminal is? Yes, sure. There used to be a slaughterhouse out back there. So, so what's the most expensive? house that's ever built at Hadley, say within the last 10 years. Just curious, is, 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 are there any million dollar houses put up? Or? I, I wonder if the one that was put up off of Tremura Road as a uh, bed and breakfast probably right. takes the prize. Yeah. Yeah, but that one is about 30 or 40, it's a good 30 years old. Because he, he, he built it and he added on to it, I think, twice. Okay, yeah. But as far as, but that that was just recently sold for I think he sold it, didn't he? I yes. don't know. I think he sold it for like 1.2 million. There is. You know, the, the whole thing about the contribution to the trust, it, it, it's it's six or more, Jimmy? Six or more? Yeah. yeah. But the, so uh, could, I think the most expensive house, there's a few of them probably qualify in the eight to $900,000 range. Yeah, so my, my point being, you know, you could, Jimmy the law the rule a little bit and put up five buildings that are worth eight hundred thousand dollars each nine hundred thousand dollars each and you got you got forty four and a half million dollars okay and you could put ten buildings up that are worth four hundred fifty thousand dollars and so I'm wondering if just thought, I'm just throwing this out just throwing this out if that a contribution to the trust fund. Could could happen if the total value of the project exceeds a certain dollar amount. Something just throw something out, okay? Because but basically you're having uh, very expensive properties being built in town, and nothing really being contributed to the the housing stock because you you stay under the six. That's a good point. Yeah, but that would be a tough one to enforce for the simple reason that. They could put up, what's to say that they put the subdivision in, say they're going to sell the houses and they're going to put in $350,000 homes. Okay. Then, 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 then you, it's only if you exceed a certain dollar amount. Okay. The building line is set. Okay. It's going to be yeah. $350,000. I'm going to set a proposal of $350,000 houses. Somebody comes in with deep pockets, puts up an $800,000 home. Somebody else does the same and somebody else does the same. And there's nothing you can do about it. Gotcha. It's only if the developer's doing it. I mean, it's 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 a it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know how you could. Well, something to think about because there's way to get ways to get around what we're the uh, housing trust contribution just by just like Obamacare. You don't hire fifty. You don't have fifty employees. You got forty nine. Okay. Same same concept. So, so laws and. I'm not participating in the Valley construction vote. So could someone else make the motion and second to release lots two, three, and four? I'll make a motion to release release lots two, three, and four in the Valley construction project in North Hadley. We have a second. motion and a second. Bill, didn't we release already release two? We, we did release, but that release hasn't been recorded. Oh, okay, okay. But it costs hundred and nine dollars to record a release. Oh, okay. So if you can record, uh, if you can release three lots on one piece of paper, you saved your versus two, you saved yourself hundred and nine dollars. Oh, okay, I got you. All right, that's why. All right, I, I know that they didn't record them. You're a gentleman, Bill. Okay. We have a motion, a second to release lots two, three, and four for the Valley Trust. Valley Trust. Valley Construction Company. Valley, Valley Construction Company. Company. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4-0 with one abstain. Yep. 
abstain. And who can any one of us can say Joel or I can sign that bill? Yeah. Okay. Although it's also uh, yeah that yeah I'll uh, connect with one of you and I'll I can notarize it. Okay. And I would just add a note to Mike's comment that laws and regulations are like fences. They keep the honest people out, but the others will find a way around them. <laughs> that's what most of our, that's why our zoning bylaws, 130 pages. <laughs> when Bill, basically when Bill and I got on the board, what, 35 years ago, Bill, give or take? Give or take, yep. The zoning bylaw book was, I think, 16 or 13 pages. It was and a, over the last yeah. number of years, we've added to it because sometimes we were proactive, but many a time we were reactive because developers and builders got very creative right. with different things. Right. Bill, do you have that little blue booklet that was the bylaw when I was... I do. Yeah, I've got one too. Flash it on the screen so Mark can see it. Well, I don't have it. Uh, oh, okay. It's, it's about the size of a little three by five notepad, Mark, and it's about as thick as five business cards. It sounds like a uh, Cub Scout merit book. It's probably smaller than that. <laughs> but it was. Yeah, the same separate thing. days. The same thing well, happened with decisions. When I first started writing the decisions, they were one or two pages long. And people kept on doing something and coming back and saying, well, you didn't say I couldn't do that. So we just, it basically feels like we're copying the zoning bylaw into the decision just to say, and you have to follow the zoning bylaw, including this part, that part, and the other part. Well, Bill, you usually make the statement that our zoning bylaws are written in a exclusionary fashion. In other words, the first paragraph basically says nothing is allowed in the town of Hadley except, and it begins to list the zones being being residential, residential, agricultural, blah, blah, and what's allowed. Because people will say, well, it doesn't say it's not allowed. So, right. Uh, that blanket statement in the beginning is kind of a negative, uh, but it does paint a broad brush. Yeah. Next up, we got, you got to think about uh, discuss applying for mass development grant proposals, Bill. Right. Um, so this is something the uh, the deadline for uh, coming up uh, with it is uh, uh, September first, I think. And I sent around uh, some material on what these grants are. Uh, David Nixon is looking at it too, and the select board is uh, going to take it up on their agenda tomorrow night. So I did uh, reach out to uh, PVPC. Um, they said that uh, you know they, they were going to check around internally about whether they have any experience with this group. And also, uh, they could possibly help us with writing a grant. Whether they could help us with actually doing the work or not depends on what we come up with. I just wanted to uh, basically put it out here, maybe get a vote to authorize me or Jim and me to discuss, to proceed with the select board because we won't meet again before we have to submit something. Any idea of what we would be applying? For what reason? So I did go through uh, the uh, the economic development chapter of the master plan update, which had a number of topics for further study. Um, I will uh, I'll shoot that around to everybody after we uh, after we sign off. Uh, but there are various ways of looking at uh, <clears throat> maybe there are some ways to um, reimagine development along Route 9 as the, especially on the eastern end, as the uh, 
the big box stores teeter on the edge of bankruptcy. You know, what's um, it's one thing to lose a, a small retailer inside the mall. It's another thing if you lose J.C. Penney. Uh, you know, are we going to? Is that going to be the next Amazon distribution center? Uh, right. So uh, you know, there are were a number of suggestions of things to look at. Um, so I said we can narrow it down to topics suggested for further study in the economic development chapter. Yeah, one of the things I saw, it, uh, some students from the University of Massachusetts, in conjunction with something like this, uh, potential redevelopment of Route 9 when business fails. And apartments seem to be the main focus. So if somebody is saying economic development is going to turn Mountain Farm Small into apartments, uh, I think we ought to have further discussion about it. And what are the sanctions if we don't take on something? In other words, if we take their money, their grant money, there must be a caveat with that. That is the critical part that I'm concerned about. Well, this uh, is, this is a statewide proposal, and I think there, I forget, well, I sent around the email of uh, the notice uh, of it. It's not a huge amount that they have out there. It's 310,000 with, they, they were suggesting grants would be between five and 50,000. Okay. So, so it's kind of a study. Uh, it's, it's for doing yeah. studies. It's yeah. not yeah. for doing anything. And if the study, you know, if that is the, if there is a thought that uh, we could convert a failed mall into apartments, Maybe we should study it to see whether that is a viable option. Or into an addiction treatment center after all the dispensaries. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I have had a couple of calls from people, speaking of dispensaries, the people who want to uh, discuss the process for applying for uh, a dispensary license. And I tell them they're. There are two authorized, and they're both gone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, yeah, they're going to they're going to apply. Though that they said that the they have to apply for the uh, special permit for the planning board yet. Bill, right? And no. uh, I sent them. Uh, I sent them an invitation to join this meeting, and. Uh, so what we did receive was uh, from the uh, assessor's office a, a list of a butter's names that was sent to them and to the planning board. So apparently they are possibly interested in proceeding with something, but they haven't done anything about it yet. So there's nothing before us. Okay. So Bill, going back to your mass development grants, do you feel that we have anything that we would want to apply for? And if so, what would we have to authorize one of us to put together a request well, or proposal? I don't think we're going to write the proposal. Okay. Uh, that would be David or That would be David uh, or, um, or possibly uh, PVPC. Okay. Uh, although probably not at, at this at at this price point, it's probably more in David's wheelhouse. Right. Um, but I think that uh, we might uh, just vote to suggest uh, coordination and uh, support uh, of, of a topic within the economic development chapter of the master plan update. I like that. Want to make some kind of motion bill to authorize the two of us? Yeah. Let me just. So I'll make a motion to authorize Jim and Bill to support uh, the application for a grant to study topics uh, in the economic development chapter of the master plan update. That's the motion. 
We have a second? I would second. Motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously, three to zero, five to zero. Um, next one to discuss public hearings on Zoom. I think we kind of have an idea of how we could conduct the actual public hearing for the non possibly ones we de determine might not be controversial. What I'm thinking about is though, how do we get the information out? Like right now, somebody wants to see the plans. They go to the town clerk's office. How do we get the plans out to the public that want to look at the plans? Is there a way for the town website to make them available on the website? That's what I was wondering. Yeah. I believe there may be. There are some some uh, dummy buttons on the planning board page. I haven't really explored it, but um, well, at the moment we have a, a button for the master plan, a button for online GIS, a button for zoning bylaws, and a button for the zoning map. <clears throat> um, I would think we could probably, I, I'll talk to Jennifer about um, okay. about whether we can you know at least on a pending basis if we could maybe put up one pdf or two pdfs at a time right the only problem with that is what if they don't have a computer to look at it a lot of times people want to and, and looking at the plans on a computer screen depending on your computer they're pretty tough to look at as opposed to seeing a full size 24 by 36 sheet in front of you. So I want to make sure that we aren't looking for an, getting into an issue here where people say, well, I couldn't see the plans very well. Because we're going to probably hear that. I guess one question, counter question to that would be, and I don't know who handles that during the week. Um, is how many people have come in to physically see plans in the past is is has that been a frequent do they go to the the town clerk or well, they are in the town clerk's office people go to the town clerk's office she pulls out the set of plans that i give them the same plans that are submitted to us mm -hmm. for whatever project it is one complete set goes to the town clerk so sometimes there's one or two sheets sometimes there's depending on a project, I mean, there won't be a Zoom meeting for that, but there'd be 20 or 30 sheets. Right, right. And people have, I would say, most of the time somebody's coming in to look at the plans. I mean, how many how many people? I don't know. But I know the town clerk has, has made a comment to me sometimes that uh, she doesn't have the, she, they didn't submit the plans to her, I would get her a set, or something, a question about the plans. Um, they didn't seem to be complete or sheets were missing. An example was Kevin, Mike, Kevin Michael said, of course, that's a controversial one, so that's a different issue. But the plans that were originally submitted were missing about, there was a half a set missing. And I mentioned to Kevin, he then gave me the missing sheets. I gave to the town clerk, everything was good. Um, but I would say people do come in. How many? I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So Northampton as far Northampton advertises from the outset the plans are visible at at their website. Okay. And they have some sort of a permitting tracking program. Um, it's probably much more than we need. Uh, where the um, uh, you you can log in or you can click into the planning department website and you can look at the plans for any particular project. Everything is pending is there. Um, now the building department I know is that was going to be my next 
to move into their own permitting program. Uh, I went, they, they were looking at a couple of the programs. I went to one of the presentations and it did say that it wasn't just a building department program, it was a permitting program. You could, you could acquire different modules uh, so that um, you know, ideally uh, we could have something submitted in, in a PDF form, uh, you know, one click and you send it out to all of the departments that are supposed to get it. Um, people could view it from outside, uh, leave comments. Um, you would know when people had reviewed it and so on. Um, I don't know whether the program that the building department is going to uh, be acquiring has that capacity or not. Uh, I don't think they, whichever one they got was not the presentation I went to, but uh, I assume it may have comparable features. Okay. Jim, when is the uh, open meeting? Uh, did we get something regarding October 1st as when? Nothing, the... Not before October 1st. Okay. So that's not a hard and fast deadline. No. No, and especially since the governor, uh, we're in, uh, what are we in, phase three, part one, yeah. and that has been expand, extended because of the rate of infection out there. So, uh, you know, there's no assurance that October one will be uh, clear for, for in-person hearings. If, you know, if UMass goes back in session and they get the same results as a lot of the other colleges, there's going to be a disaster. Probably going to be who knows when before everything gets going. I heard I heard somebody showed up up at Amherst College today and they tested positive. A student. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to stay home because of that, Mike. That's all. Yeah. UMass. There. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, PBS NewsHour thing on rethinking colleges. It was, I don't know, maybe a eight or 10 minute national broadcast, but I'd say the last five minutes of it were about Amherst and UMass and um, how the town pushed back on having, you know, 30 or 50% of the on-campus students returning. And um, so, yeah, so we're down to now UMass is only bringing back on campus, only bringing back, I think it's the last I heard, we're under 1,200 or around 1,200 students. That's a heck of a lot different than at some points it was going to be 12,000. That's, again, we can't control the off-campus, you know, those who have paid for a lease and want to get their party value out of it. Judging by the traffic at the grocery store on Saturday, the uh, there are more than twelve hundred, uh, and, and I think off campus. The, yeah, yeah. The, the parents were there with the kids. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, go, go, go. Yeah, You've been here long enough. Well, I mean the uh, the financial probably address the mark financial ramifications to the college if you're reducing the number of students. How long can they go on like this? Well, I'm obviously not at that level, but I do know that our union is saying, hey, guys, you have a huge endowment for a rainy day fund. Is this not a rainy day? <laughs> you know, that's basically what the union's saying that they have. And I don't remember what the numbers are, but um, they're... I haven't heard anything decisive on that. I know that we did do um, voluntary furloughs um, in last fiscal year, and I expect that we're going to be, or, or involuntary, we're going to be expected to sk schedule those again. Um, but so far, I haven't heard of, I know there were some early cuts at the one of the other campuses I think that was a lot of the AFSME people. Um, Dartmouth but, was that, wasn't it? UMass Dartmouth? Uh, might have been. I think Dartmouth, I was thinking it was up um, 
maybe not Lowell. I, I can't remember, but yeah, that triggered a big backlash. So yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, but I was going to go going back to um, what Bill was talking about with the public hearings. And Jim was saying, what if people don't have a computer? Um, I was going to say, what is the building department doing? And Bill started to talk about that. And he said, they're going to an online permitting. So is that going to be a problem for people that don't have a computer or will we have to assume that they can get to a public computer, like at a library or something like that? If, um, I mean, I, I, I was just wondering if, I mean, How far if, the library, if the library is open, we'll probably be having opening meetings, won't we? <laughs> Maybe. Well, Jim, I think, is referring to a different audience, Mark. Yeah. And I mean, developers probably have a much more sophisticated uh, operation than uh, a neighbor that get, gets a letter right. and is concerned about what's happening next door. And, uh, yeah. and that's, that's a little different. Yeah. <clears throat> well, as as Alan Gutman, an old professor from Amherst College, said, it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. <clears throat> what, it may, what it may be is that we get a number of plans. We put them online to the other boards, and we retain two or three sets of plans. I retain, the board retains two or three sets of plans. I mean, I doubt you're going to get more than a couple of neighbors that can't, don't have a computer. But if they don't and they want a set of plans, give them a set of plans to look at. That's, that's, yeah. That's the reason. Because most, most of the projects we're talking about here are not, like I said, they're not going to be a 20 page set of plans. They're going to be two or three sheets at most. And yeah. a lot of times they'll fit on a, a I mean, a, a legal size sheet. We're talking like accessory apartments. Um, minor things like that you got a major development no they're they're not going to be a zoom meeting is there um uh, did i hear is the senior center open for small small things there's no <laughs> events going on there yet. okay you know, and you, i go on once a month to see somebody okay it's not open to my get my confession yeah it's, it's not open to the general public as an open building okay if you have a special need you can make an appointment and go in. kind of like the bank make an appointment you can come in which is not there's no walk-ins for per se yeah. they are it's not drop-in but they are running some programs there but it, you know, it's like a book club got it spaced 10 feet apart and do they have a meeting event function space that is potentially available for other town um, entities to yes. book? Yes, and Jane, so, has, Jane has offered that. Because I was thinking that could be an option that if we, uh, if someone doesn't have a computer and we put um, drawings up for a public hearing, they could schedule in a time to come in and use a public computer there to view the PDFs. Great idea. Yeah, that good would be idea. a way around it. You know that. That's, you say, that's, a good, you know, that's, a, that's a good idea too. That we're giving you the opportunity to schedule a, an appointment. It's going to be you know socially distanced. You know, it's only one family or one person at a time. And has it probably <laughs> Bill can answer this question? Has it been finally resolved that the senior sitting there? Uh, they were quite adamant during the town meeting that it was only for the seniors, not to be shared by the community. Have they changed their attitude? And is it a community uh, building? I think it's still a senior center. Uh, and the um, you recall at the town meeting what they were referring to, right? You know, they were. Uh, you know, the, the fact is that that. Their functions are what eight to four, nine to four, and the building is not used for those purposes after that. So, you know, theoretically, it's going to be used for voting, for example, on the first. Okay. Um, 
but um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a, uh, it's not going to be coexisting with other functions simultaneously. You know, there was a, there was an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting I've heard that met at Hooker School once a week. And I, I know that they'd like to get back to the center of Hadley. Uh, they moved it up to the Methodist Church, uh, which is just difficult for people to get to, getting off a bus or whatever. Those meetings were heavily attended too. I remember we used to go to, uh, I forgot what, what meeting was, I used to go out there on certain nights and they were having their meeting and they were filling, they were filling sometimes two rooms. Yeah, it's Wednesday night. Yeah. Wednesday. So. So I don't know how, uh, uh, I have no idea what the policy will be for community groups using the space versus other town boards. The select board he held a meeting there at the beginning of uh, July. <clears throat> and um, you, certainly Jane has offered it as a planning board space and it would probably work out to be a better meeting room than uh, the town hall second floor. So we're gonna have a lot of trouble with uh, you know, capacity issues and spacing issues uh, in that particular room. And what about files, Bill? Just gonna leave them over the town hall and access them as needed? Uh, I think we'll have to, uh, yeah. if, if we're doing it that way. We're not gonna, right. uh, right. by and large, <clears throat> Jim has been really good about the fact that we, we have two hearings going on sometimes three in a night, that means three files. If we get someone who comes in and asks about something we decided 10 years ago, uh, <laughs> we're not going to really walk across the street with, to, to go through that, but that's the oh. thing to take a separate appointment for. I have met people at, at our office in the past who wanted to take a deeper dive into something. Yeah, and those aren't very free. If they, if they occur, I'm going to say half a dozen times a year, that's a lot. So, um, let's see. Articles of special, special fall town meeting. Um, Mike has given me his uh, handwritten notes so I can put the formula down, but he's gave them to me the other day. So I will have those for our next meeting. I will have that uh, article for the next meeting. Okay, I'll leave that item on the uh, on the agenda. And uh, did um, did uh, do you get a a sort of final draft of the definition section? Yes, I've got that. Pretty much the last one that Kevin that Ken put out. I'll, I will put that send that around to everybody again. Um, take that out. I know we were talking with him about uh, uh, doing some formatting changes. Right. I don't know if he did that. Um, no, I have not. He has not given that to me. Okay. And then you were going to go through and tag all the other items that had to be deleted. Yeah. I, had, I have already done that. So we've got that pretty well put up. We're just going to get the formal definition. We just got to get the definitions formatted in the right way. That's all. Do you, so, you want to email Ken just to ask about that? And I know he emailed you and me today just uh, looking for the uh, contract. I don't know. Yeah, I got the contract. I just going to make copies. I'll get them to the town hall hopefully tomorrow so that the town accountant can sign it and get it back to us so we can get it over to Ken. Okay. Oh, that um, – on a different note, so – can you arrange access, uh, an appointment to get into town hall? I mean, for example, uh, for getting sworn in to this other committee, you know, it's unrelated to this, but just access to town hall. I don't know how that, how that works. Uh, you would, for something like that, that's a clerk. So you would want to talk to Jessica about, uh, I have had to file things or get, things signed by her and she I just call her to tell her I'm in the parking lot she comes out the back door and hands it to me okay um, 
So I don't believe that there is, well, I don't know for sure. I, I, if we moved her to the other side of the floor, we could get her a drive up window. Right. <laughs> yeah. The shape of things quick. to come. What's that, Joe? You have to be really quick <laughs> on that side of the building, the north side of the building. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't think it is considered generally available, um, okay. no. even by appointment. Okay. I have nothing else. Nothing else from me. And I have nothing else either. I had a question. Does anyone know what's the status of, I've, I think at the, was it the town meeting or something I heard? Uh, more references to us going to the old uh, library building. Do we know any time frame and how that's going forward with a study or there, et cetera, there is, et cetera? At, at the annual town meeting, we approved an article to investigate putting a addition slash handicap accessible elevator on the building. Right. And yeah. until that really goes in, they really can't put us any place because the building. Um, right. It's accessible well, to the first floor, but not to the bathrooms in the basement. Right. right. That's so, correct. They, there's a phase development and uh, the phase one is to put us on the first floor and study the uh, where the elevator could go. And this was CPA funding. And some of it is replacing wiring. And it's a question, is that maintenance or is that historical renovation? So uh, these are the kind of things you're gonna wrestle with, Mark, so. So there has been some turnover on the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, David Tudrin resigned. Oh, really? Um, There's room for an architect then. Yeah. Enough. <laughs> I was trying to figure what I was going to do with all my extra time. <laughs> well, now, now you got it. <laughs> so I think someone else resigned as well. Uh, <clears throat> or maybe that was the Russell School uh, study. Um, so I, I'm not entirely sure who's running with that one at the moment. Yeah, that, I, Because the whole uh, virus thing, there's a lot of things that are unknown with a lot of different projects, Mark, obviously. Yeah. It's probably not real high on somebody's list either with everything going on either. Yeah, the four buildings, four additional houses that were going in over here have been put on hold because of coronavirus and skyrocketing construction costs and dearth of materials. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but there's four more cellar holes that have to be put in here. So. I guess I was just wondering if if the town moves away from whenever we can do public meetings, doing them upstairs at uh, town hall and doing them elsewhere, like someone was saying that the space at the at the senior center might be more amenable to um, public meetings, then maybe we could move over to that building before if with our files if the public meetings were going to be held across the parking lot at the senior center but yeah, that's i'm getting ahead of myself just all we gotta do we, we 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 have no answers to any of that stuff or even right. again right. yeah by the time we move in there joe zagranik's going to be running for re-election again <laughs> for the oval office <laughs> Okay. I'm in the ballpark of some of those candidates, you know. Don't laugh. <laughs> that, yeah, I know. Isn't that scary? You're only a few years older than Biden. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Probably in better shape than he is, too. Well, I'm sure he wouldn't want to be out on the farm every day. All that gardening you do, yeah, all that farming. Yes. Anyways, um, anybody else have anything? 
Uh, I think that is everything. Okay. I'm, I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Media's Aye. history, thank you, and thank you, John.